I want to start with something that happened on another podcast this morning. Um, I don't know if you ever listened to The Daily, right? The New York Times is The Daily, but I always listen to it because it's just interesting. I listen to Morning Wire. I, I like it, you know, from all different sources. And today's The Daily is amazing. <laughs> it's amazing. They have my, on my old pal, Jim Rutenberg, who I really like, I have to say. He's definitely more leftist um, and definitely thinks journalists should be covering Trump in a way you and I don't think is appropriate, but he's a good guy. So he goes over there on the daily and he speaks um, with a reporter about what happened, Michael Barbaro, between NBC and Ronna McDaniel. And they're trying to do a sincere look at why it imploded and became such a huge controversy. And their musings on the position that modern day media is in, I found so entertaining. And I think you will too. So I'm going to kick it off with a rather lengthy clip of that show and get your reaction. Take a listen. How do we capture him, cover him for all of his lies, all the challenges he poses to democratic norms, mm. yet not alienate some 74, 75 million American voters? You've got tens of millions of Trump supporters seeing what's really basic fact-checking. These look like attacks to Trump supporters. Trump, in turn, is calling the press, the reporters are enemies of the people. So it's a terrible dynamic. Mm -hmm. And when January 6th happens, it's so obviously out of control. And what the traditional press that follows traditional journalistic rules has to do is make it clear that the claims that Trump is making about a stolen election are just so abjectly false that they don't warrant a single minute of real consideration once the reporting has been done to show how false they are. And I think that American journalism really emerged from that, feeling strongly about its own values and its own place in society. But then, you know, there's still tens of millions of Trump voters, mm. and they don't feel so good about the coverage, and they don't agree that January 6th was an insurrection. Well, how is NBC? How is CNN? How are any of these TV networks, if they have decided that this is their mission, how are they supposed to speak to people who believe something fundamentally untrue as a core part of their political identity? Nobody wants to be seen as wearing a jersey in our business. No one wants to be wearing a jersey in our business. But maybe what they really have to accept is that we're just sticking to the true facts and that may look like we're wearing a jersey, but we're not. And that may at times look like it's lining up more with the Democrats, but we're not. We're going to tell you the truth, even if it means that we're going to lose a big part of the country. We're going to tell you the truth. That's our mission at the New York Times and NBC, even if it means we're going to lose a big part of the deluded country, Ben, that just won't accept what we tell them is, quote, truth. What do you make of it? I mean, it's just so self-righteous. And this is the game that the media have been trying to play for decades at this point is that they are overtly on the left, but they just identify the truth with their political perspective. And this means that if they're just repeating left-wing talking points, then we're all supposed to take that as gospel truth, as, as real statement of fact. The, the reality is that there used to be a time when members of the media tried to remove their bias, I think a little bit from, from their coverage. I think that time ended probably during the Obama administration when the media basically decided they were an adjunct to the Obama White House. And, and now that's become so obviously clear, especially at places like MSNBC, where you have this revolving door where Jen Psaki, while she is the White House press secretary, is negotiating for a contract to host a TV show on MSNBC, and she's moved right from one to the other. Hey, you see this sort of stuff at MSNBC all, all the time. Again, it would be better if MSNBC just said, listen, we're a left-wing network, and because we're a left-wing network, we don't feel like employing Ronna McDaniel. That'd be perfectly within their purview. The issue for MSNBC and, and Ronna McDaniel is that they keep suggesting that they're actually a news network. NBC News keeps suggesting they're a news network. Well, if you're a news network, then the proper answer to the Ronna McDaniel supposed conundrum is you hire her, you have her on, and then you have somebody on who rebuts what she's saying if you think what she's saying is false. But they don't even want to expose that to the light of day because the idea, I guess, is that if she makes the argument and then you rebut the argument, 
that her argument is so fully untrue that it can't even have a hearing. Well, that's weird because Ronald McDaniel, from what I've seen, actually does not suggest that the election was stolen in the way that Donald Trump does. I, I believe that her position on the election is that the election was rigged by changing all the rules, that the election w was rigged by not allowing Hunter Biden's laptop to be covered by the media and all the rest of this. But I, I, I'm not aware that Ronald McDaniel has actually taken right now, as of now, the position that there were actual voter fraud questions so, so significant that Donald Trump won the election except for voter fraud. You're right. She may have taken that position in the past. That's not something that she's taking right now. No, so it's, I it's think her position is take. unfair, but not stolen. Keep going. Right, exactly. So, so because of that, they have to come up with some excuse why she is a difference in kind, and they can't. And so what they're coming back to is this idea that they are the sole repositories of fact. And you can hear it even in that clip where they're moving from, we covered January 6th, we covered the election denialism, and then anybody who says it's not an insurrection is somehow in the land of fiction. Well, wait a second. I don't actually believe that January 6th was an insurrection because an insurrection typically involves, say, the military involving itself in a coup at the behest of one of the members of the government. It doesn't involve a bunch of people who are either committing criminal trespass or rioting in the Capitol building, immediately thrown out within two hours, and then the country goes on. That's just called a riot. Does that mean that I am now purveying something that's not a fact? It seems to me that my characterization of that, which is similar, I think, to yours and to a lot of people's, is much more accurate than simply labeling something in insurrection the way the media does. That, that's a political analysis point. But you can see the conflation of the label insurrection with fact. That kind of speaks to the whole thing. Yeah. And, you know, that Trump hasn't been charged with insurrection. That's not one of their favorite claims on the January 6th defendants. Uh, but they they say it like it's fact. And if you if you disagree it was an insurrection, how are we going to reach these people? I mean, we want viewers. That's what they were lamenting in the larger piece that like maybe MSNBC doesn't need more right leaning or independent viewers. But big NBC, they they want them. So how are you supposed to speak to these people? I mean, like, what are you supposed to do? And especially when they see fact checking of Trump as an attack, fact checking him looks like an attack. Ironically, as they're having this conversation, Kristen Welker, the anchor of Meet the Press, is over there doing a little of this so-called, quote, fact checking. Now, this soundbite I'm about to play is making the rounds in the mainstream media today because the left is outraged about the way she describes Trump's attacks on the the, the daughter of Judge Merchant, who's overseeing the Stormy Daniels hush money pay, uh, case, who's a political operative. She's a progressive. She's connected with this um, far left organization that got Adam Schiff and others elected. And her personal Twitter account has definitely taken shots at Trump, though her team is now claiming she deactivated that and that's now somebody else. But you can see why Trump might have looked at the account and said, it's her. It's got a picture of him behind bars. Anyway, that's the background of the clip you're about to hear. Kristen Welker kind of brushes past it and the left wanted her to make a big, bigger deal out of it. I want you to forget that piece of it for right now. Take a listen at the very beginning to Kristen Welker's so-called fact check that I guess we lunatics see as an attack or won't just fucking accept because Kristen Welker says it's so. Take a listen. Meanwhile, this week, the former president stepped up his attacks on the judge and his family in the New York hush money case after that judge imposed a partial gag order on Mr. Trump less than three weeks from the April 15th start date in that trial. And now Trump is asserting that none of the trials should, quote, take place during my campaign, falsely calling the criminal proceedings election interference. It is yet there another is. reminder that we are covering this election against the back drop of a deeply divided nation. You got it? To call well, the criminal that? trials election well, interference is false. is false. Right. I mean, it is it is 100% election interference. I mean, the, the, when Donald Trump says the hush money allegations were brought about about the 2016 election, and I checked the calendar, and it is currently 2024, I mean, that's a, that's a, a real hot take there from Kristen Welker, but, but you're exactly right. I mean, the, the basic way that the media now report these things is that our opinions are the facts. And if you don't like our facts, that's because you actually are a fact rejector. And that's a really stupid way to cover this sort of stuff. Again, it really is not that difficult, actually, to cover President Trump in all of his varieties. <laughs> he says things that are not true a lot. And I'm, I'm talking to somebody who co-hosted an event for him a couple of weeks ago. You know, he, he obviously says things that I disagree with a lot. But I think the other half of this is that the same media that will declare that it's an absolute 100 percent fact that the hush money trial is not election interference against Trump in a state where the prosecutors have vowed to go against Trump for years. 
The same people who will say that will not cover a single lie that Joe Biden ever tells. They put Daniel Dale, the fact checker at CNN, in witness protection for several years there when <laughs> Joe Biden was first president because he had to disappear from the scene. Then, Joe, then Donald Trump gets nominated and suddenly Daniel Dale's back on your TV every night doing his long litany of, of misstatements or lies from, from President Trump. And we can see the double standard. It'd be one thing if you were saying we're going to call out all the lies. If you did that, then I'd be like, okay, I, I get it. Maybe I, maybe you're mischaracterizing something here or there, but at least you're attempting. So they're not even attempting anything. Joe Biden, according to these folks, is an absolute truth teller who requires no fact check. When he does say something wrong, it's just a mistake. When Donald Trump says something wrong, it's because he's a malicious attempt. He's a malicious coup d'etat destroyer of democracy. Mm -hmm. It's amazing to listen to her. I mean, it wouldn't take much for someone to say, hold on, that's opinion. That's not fact. You don't. You don't say, which is not true, which is false, that it's election interference. That's, that is a very hotly debated topic amongst the electorate right now. And virtually every Republican and most independents would say it is election interference, especially that bullshit claim she's talking about, the, the horse Stormy Daniels hush money one. So for her to just slide it in there, like it's, it's just not, okay. And then at the same time have this discussion over on the New York Times about how I don't know why these morons don't just accept fact checking for the truth offering that it is. You know, we're just gonna have to, I guess, try to find a way of speaking to these people or not. That's the real big debate, underscores so much that's wrong with media today. As we approach another critical election, many Americans are concerned. Recent studies reveal that an astonishing 56% of citizens report feelings of anxiety or dread about the upcoming election. But look, I wanna tell you about AMAC, the Association of Mature American Citizens. AMAC is more than a senior organization. During these challenging times, they fight for common sense. They're gonna help eliminate that dread you're feeling. And they fight for the US to return to traditional American values. Visit amac.us slash Megan today to get an exclusive election year special, a four year AMAC membership for just 30 bucks. As an AMAC member, you not only enjoy money-saving benefits, but also the AMAC magazine, free social security and Medicare advice, a trusted voice in Washington, and a community of like-minded patriots. Take advantage of this election year special, four years for 30 bucks, and be part of the solution. Join now at amac.us slash Megan. That's A-M-A-C dot U-S forward slash M-E-G-Y-N. Hey, thanks so much for watching. If you like what you just saw, hit the subscribe button for more clips and full episodes.